today, excuse me as I adjust on my chair, <laughs> we're going to work with the faux papyrus paper that we made. Um, I started doing some little journaling cards with it yesterday and love it. Like, I just love these. So the weight of it is really cool, but just the look of it is so cool. It really is a very unique, you know, look. Like, look at that. And, um, you know, it feels cool. And so I sewed some of the Mrs. Cog's images. I've got some, you know, raggedy cheesecloth behind there. So I did that and then I collaged one up with some of the Tracy Fox stuff and some of the freebies that I found online. And um, yeah, so I'm kind of leaving the rough edge on some things because I kind of like the way that looks. So those are the ones that I've made. I'm gonna throw them over in my done pile. Then I've got the rest of the um, stuff kind of sliced up here. So what I thought was, I've got another like journal card size one and then I've sliced the, these pieces into like kind of tall skinny tag like pieces. So we'll make, you know, tags out of those. And then I've got the ends of some of the pieces where there's this super great raggedy, jaggedy line. And I thought these would make really cool um, flip outs. So I think we'll make a few flip outs. Now I don't know how much of this we'll get to in this video. I do not know. And then I have one that has double edge still, so I might make pockets out of it. I'm not sure because it's got, it's where one where the back is all, it was one of the ones that I did on the first piece that was like too wet when I started peeling it up. So I can either, I'll either have to back that with something or I can use it as pockets, which I was kind of thinking I would do. So let's, let us, let us do a few of these first. Let's design these tags, huh? Um, the other cool thing is, is like where it's kind of want, wanted to roll up on the edges a little, I can do this because it's flexible from all that paste that I used to put it together. I can kind of just do this and reshape it and flatten it back down, which is nice. Um, I am gonna just snap this little edge off here because that's going to totally catch going in and out of a pocket or something. There we go. All right. So now let's get some of the, let's get some of our Tracy Fox collage papers here. These are just some scrappy scraps that I have before I rip into a new one. I'm going to grab my tear ruler which is way back there but um I love this it'll make it a little bit neater on those bigger ones before I was I don't know why I have all these laid out here <laughs> okay so let's try to see if we can rip down some of a couple of these are a little wider yeah okay I'm gonna rip this super jaggedy edge off here hold on my desk is a mess, guys. But when is it not, honestly? Well, that kind of worked. When I'm trying to rip on the edge of something very tight like this, it's pretty difficult. Yeah, you gotta do it fast. Rip the Band-Aid off fast. Okay, let's get this little lovely Egyptian couple down here. Okay, yup. Now, let's separate this. Because it's kind of almost like two separate pieces here. So we'll have them, and then we'll have some little hieroglyphic pieces. Then, let's see if we can, see this guy's got a cat, and this one is just hanging out by themselves. So let's separate them. That's the cool thing about collage papers like this, is you can kind of just do, um, like select images. There, I have a, um, 
I have a, okay, let's separate this guy too, and the cat, this dude and his cat. <laughs> I have a one that accidentally, a piece of collage paper that accidentally I printed because, you know, again, if you've been around, you know me and my printing <laughs> um, that I accidentally printed onto like a super heavy cardstock. So I think that that will become some cutout tuck spots, I think. I was kind of looking at it going, what am I going to do with this? But, okay. So we've got those guys. And we've got just some like hieroglyphic stuff here. Okay. Then we've got these little chunks of hieroglyphics that we could tuck behind things. This one's a little wider. There. All right. So I'm just kind of collaging around on here, honestly, what I'm going for. Then we've got some little bits of this like colorful stuff that we could stick in and around and behind. Cause I think it just adds these little, these little things were such a great find. They add just a pop of color and it's like that cohesive color. And maybe these guys get a layer of it down here, huh? Yeah, then let's just take some amulets off the top of our amulets pile and see if we can throw a few in here. Oh, wouldn't that be kind of cool as like the tag pull at the top? Some of these. Okay, the hook maybe goes this way, or do they all go this way, or do some of them go sideways? See, this is what I don't know. I suppose we can just decide. We can just make it up as we go, since this is not, but I kind of like that jaggedy edge at the top, so maybe it just goes sideways there. Um... Yeah, because I, because this is definitely not a, like, super authentic uh, representation here. We're doing the whimsical, there we go. We're doing the whimsical version. Okay, I kind of like how those are set up. Am I totally out of frame? No, I'm, I'm okay. Somewhat okay. Um, this one needs something else. What does it need? Some of this behind everything. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll get that all figured out. So I'm going to ink around all of this because there's no reason for you to sit and watch me ink around all of this. So I will buzz through this and be right back. So now we've got them all inked up around the edges. So let's start just gluing this down. And I have some little scrappy doos of some cheesecloth over here that I feel like, you know, should go underneath at least something on here. Most of it I probably want to be pretty flat because. You know, if it's going to slide in and out of pockets, if it's got too much cheesecloth or fabric hanging off of it, it doesn't like to slide in and out or that stuff ends up getting torn and ripped. And I don't want that to happen either. So 
All right, now it's just a matter of gluing it all down. I don't know that this piece really needs to go in any specific direction. So we are on our <clears throat> we're on our final countdown to vacation here. We've got just today. Yeah. Um tomorrow we have to like pack and everything and load the car up and then we leave on Saturday morning. But you won't be watching this till I'm on vacation. <laughs> but we're excited. Ready to go do some fun things. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of cheesecloth behind this guy here. And that's probably a little too wide. I don't want it that wide. Like I said, I don't I don't want it getting caught on a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to try to keep it to a minimum, but you know, cheesecloth. Hello. Everything needs a little cheesecloth in my world. Okay. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to sew around these, but I don't think so. I think these will just be pieces like that. There we go, that's one. So, and look at how cool the back is. Like, this, this paper is so cool. Um, it definitely is like, a, gives you the, it definitely gives you the, the, the Egyptian feelings, the ancient, something ancient, you know, I don't know that this would necessarily work. It would probably work cool in like a, a, a nature journal. You could stamp, Ooh, you could stamp. Um, I've got some, I finally bought these stamps that I'd had my eyes on for like the longest time. They're Tim Holtz stamps and they're um, leaves. And I bought them a little while ago when I kind of did a little bit of a haul for myself. Um, when I got all my inks and stuff. And then I bought a few stamp sets too. And one of them was these leaves. And I'd been looking at them. I'd had them, you know, have you seen the, the meme that says one of my favorite hobbies is um, loading up virtual shopping carts and then abandoning them? Yep. I'd had them in my scrapbook.com and my Amazon carts multiple times and just could never pull the trigger on them until I finally did. And um, so anyway, long story short, <laughs> wouldn't those look kind of cool on this paper stamped, ooh, stamped and embossed. Although, you know, stamping onto this paper might be a little bit tough because of the texture wonder if I could, st I would just stamp onto um, like some coffee stained paper or something and then glue it onto this, which would be fine too. Attaching it to that. Where is the end of my, there we go. I wonder if it's, in, uh, no. Uh, no, there we go. This one wants to wrinkle up a little here. Come on guy get with the program yeah we're going way down there right we don't want to block his head or anything and I could kind of go off the edge there but maybe on the next one who knows maybe we'll get a little more daring as we go it's first thing in the morning here the coffee's still kicking in speaking of let's just take a sip as we Push this thing down. We got unexpected rain last night. Like pouring rain. But <laughs> really heavy deluge, which we really needed because, you know, we haven't had a whole lot of... We had that really hot spell and that dried everything out and there was no... 
no sort of um, precipitation during that, which just made everything really dry, our poor farmers. But it has since um, rained several times, which is good. But they had just been kind of small rains. Well, last night we got a good thorough soaking. I was on my way. <coughs> I was walking down to church for Bible study, which is like two blocks down and one block over. Not very far. But as I was walking that short distance, the sky was getting darker and darker. And I thought this would have been a good day to drive or at least to have brought my umbrella. Well, if I had brought my umbrella, it still wouldn't have done much because this was like, I'm not kidding, this was a downpour. Let's see, what are we doing with this one? Did I have it up here? Yeah, I think I'll do this. Luckily, my mom drove her van over to Bible study last night. Because my dad, as he was walking over, saw how dark the sky was and called my mom and said, Hey, when you come over, will you drive the van? Which was good news because by the time we left church, it's like that thing where, you know, you're you're going, oh, it's not so bad. It's kind of sprinkling. Like I've walked home in the sprinkly rain. I don't really mind. It kind of, I kind of like, you know, a little soaking every once in a while. <laughs> but this was not just a little soaking. This was... This was downpouring, so suddenly I was glad. Should we go off the edge a little there? Why not? But then cheesecloth behind it. Well, let's just not put cheesecloth behind this one. And let's make sure we ink the edge of it. So when you flip it over, pardon me, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> I could feel that one coming. Okay, I'm going to just make sure no glue is leaking out back here. Hopefully that's not totally upside down. Does it need another one? Yeah. Yep, it does. Because then I can put cheesecloth on this one. And I forgot to silence my phone. But, you know, par for the course. Okay. We also have to get the house all clean before we go because you know what first of all there's nothing as annoying as leaving on vacation and leaving your house all messy and then coming home from vacation you're tired but you're you know you're glad to be home but you've got you're looking forward to you got to be back to work the next day all that stuff and your house is a mess that's just not cool it's best to come home to an, a, a clean house so we've got to get our house clean too so I can hear Joy out there. She must be, she must be working on something. She likes to clean. You guys, my 13 year old, have I told you this? I don't know if I've expressed to you this joy that I have. Literally, Joy is the name of my daughter. <laughs> but this kid enjoys cleaning. You guys, she enjoys cleaning so much that um, like people around her know this about her that she likes cleaning and having things you know clean and in order and um, so one of the women at church Kay Joy showed up so yesterday we had Bible buddies which is now during the summer it's like during the daytime at church and Joy goes over to help like with the little it's little kids it's you know like first through fourth or fifth grade or something so joy was over there to help and um <laughs> and one of the women that was there uh cleaning who who helps but she's also the one who cleans the church well joy goes and helps her clean the church because joy likes cleaning so you know she's like that's not even hard work that's a that's my spiritual gift cleaning 
Um, so she she was over there, uh, but she also comes and helps with Bible buddies. So she was there. And then afterwards, we went to the cafe where my daughter works, my other daughter works, um, Lizzie, and had lunch with my mom and dad and Joy, my husband and I. And when we got over there, she had the, like, we have a mail bag that we take when we walk over to the post office, just in case there's packages or something. So you're not trying to carry all that home. So she had the mail bag and, but it was like, obviously very heavy. And I'm like, what's in the bag? And she pulls out and she's like, look what Kay gave me. <laughs> I'm not kidding you guys. It was a bottle of, um, pine salt like a big giant bottle of pine salt like floor mopping solution and uh um and some toilet cleaner and she was so excited about this and Kay obviously knows she likes to clean so she bought her cleaning products like that is speaking Joy's love language so Kay gets her <laughs> they brought her cleaning products Joy's the one who, like, will say, if I'm going to Bemidji to get shopping, to do shopping, she'll say, oh, there's this new kind of sponge. Can you get me one of these sponges or, you know, whatever, what have you? And I'm always like, yep, you know what? I will get you whatever it is because I am so appreciative that she enjoys cleaning. Oops. Wrong end. Um... Yeah, so that was so funny. Yesterday she had cleaning products in her bag and she was stoked. She does not like to go shopping at all. She's which is also funny for a you know, teenage girl, but nope, not a fan of shopping. Uh well, I take that back. She's a fan of shopping if it's something that she wants. She does not like doing grocery shopping. She does not like if I need to go to Menards and, you know, or Home Depot or something and get a bunch of wood and extension cords and stuff. Not a fan of that so much. But she does like shopping if it's like Hobby Lobby or something. Even then though, she'll be like, Do, how much are we getting here? Is it gonna take forever? <laughs> okay guys. So we've got these tags done. Look, that was quick and easy. And I love how they look. <clears throat> so I'm going to just kind of flatten them out just a little bit more here. And then I'm going to put them over on my done pile because I'm feeling pretty good about those. And then let's move on and make some, let's do some, I'm, I'm kind of excited to do these. Let's do some of these flip out things. Let's grab... So we need one of my signatures and we need to find, oh, that might be the one right there. We got to find a place where we're going to put the flip out. Oh, like this. And if I do it like this, I can keep this raw edge on the bottom. Or do I want to just cut it off and have, yeah, I might want to do that. Okay, let's just do it on this page since that's where it came to first. I'm gonna set this back aside. And I think we will use, I have still out my, um, come here, that's a long piece, my crinkly muslin. So we'll use this as our hinge on to put this thing on. And let's just do this thing. So, I'm gonna, I inked around the edges, but I left this edge raw because I knew it would be behind a, a hinge. Okay. I'm gonna try and hold that very carefully, flip it over and trim. Okay. Oh, well, we don't need this one little jaggedy piece there, huh? That would surely just be ripped right off. 
Oh, how cool is that going to look, guys, as a flip out? Um, I'm definitely keeping these little, not these tiny little pieces, but this piece, because I have a feeling we'll make some clusters at some point here, because I'm kind of addicted and to decorating every single page of a journal these days. <laughs> so, so I end up making a lot of clusters because they go great to like finish off a book. Okay, then we need a piece of this. And this I don't mind if it's a little bit long because I don't mind if it sticks out the top and bottom. Okay. So now I'm gonna sew it on. Um, I'm trying to think, should I run a bead of glue? I think I will just to keep it straight. Cause the problem with, if you don't, ouch, <laughs> what did I just do that for? If you don't have at least something holding the fabric in place, it can go wonky as you're trying to sew. Come on, glue. Ugh. Okay. Try number two. First, we have to wait for their bubble. Okay. So, like I was saying before the glue rudely decided not to do its job, um, if you don't put some, if you don't have something holding it in place, the fabric can get all wonky while you're stitching. And then your, um, and then your hinge <laughs> gets out of place and it looks weird. So I'm going to do this and this will just hold it in place as I stitch. And if your hinge gets wonky, then it doesn't want to flip out right. So. Okay. Then. Let's see, what am I doing? I want it to go this way. So I'm going to line this up. And try to make it as straight as possible. And then I'm going to put a little, if it cooperates, I'm going to put a little line of glue here too. I'm just putting a barely there kind of line of glue. Um, just enough to adhere this down while I stitch. It's not the main holding, it's not the main hold. Okay, oops. Okay, gluey fingers. Look at that. Ooh, I like how that looks. That's pretty cool looking. Okay, um, I'm gonna, you know what? Let's do, let's do a couple more. Uh, because then this can dry. I don't want to put that, I'm going to put it over there. I don't want to put that through my sewing machine uh, while it's that wet. That's never a good idea um, because it it goobs up the machine, get glue goobers on there. Okay, let's find a page that we want to have a tip out on. I, I'm kind of looking for just something that is dark or you know, that'll have like, that'll stand out against. Okay, let's cover that back up so we don't end up with more glue issues. Is that the best page for it? this one it's a little darker okay we'll put that up there and we'll do the same thing we'll just line it up and I'm gonna try and cut as little off the bottom as possible um, because then I can have enough up here that I can save for <laughs> I'm trying to be so careful um, that I can save for making clusters and stuff Wow, there goes the bus.
that does not want to, there we go. Nope, that's not going to work either. Away with that and to the pile with that. Okie dokie. All right, now we need a strip of cloth for a hinge. Um, for the sake of time, so that we can actually have some time to decorate these uh, flip outs and stuff, I will um, fast forward through me making a few more hinges because there's really, you know, you've seen me do it now. So I'm going to just attach a few more, whoops, in place. And then we will come back and, um, and I'll go sew them. So I'll attach them in place and then I'll go sew them. Oops, that was a little thick up there. And then I'll come back and show you what they look like. guys so I have sewn them on I did some fancy stitches with my machine um, so there's that one and there's that one and then this one um, I love like I said I'm using this variegated yarn which is cool and I thought I would show you this but I did this on the other ones already but um, the stitching on the back side you know tends to get like the white paper kind of flips through and gets a little so if you just go over the stitches with your anchor it makes it look a lot nicer so that's what I do okay so let's put these oh no let's not put them back yet because I want to decorate the flaps a little maybe um I've got these long strips of this stuff that's on that freebie site that I found so I thought some of that, and then, you know, I forget who it was, but someone said the Rick Rack, the gold Rick Rack actually looks like it would match. And I didn't even really think about it until I unwound it and started looking at it. And I was like, you know what? You're kind of right. It's not, it does look kind of like a lot of the patterns, the waviness, right? So maybe what we do here is, I was thinking if I'm very careful about it, and glue very carefully around this. It could be a tuck spot for something, right? Like a tag or something could tuck in there. So I think that's what I wanna do. Um, these images are, if you, I'll try to remember to put it, the link down again, but if I don't, if I forget <laughs> to put the link in, since I'm trying to, you know, film and edit so many videos right now, if I forget to put the link in, it is um, on my video where I made the, oh, I'm going to cut this off, aren't I? It's on the video. I like this patterns more up there. So let's Okay, where am I wanting to cut it? Right at this line right there. It's kind of nice that these has this, has this line on there. And this little pattern piece goes over with my cluster making stuff and junk. Okay. So, um, before I move on and totally forget to say what I was just saying, these will be on the video where I made the um, paper bag, pocketed paper bags um, for this in the playlist. There's a link to the site that I found this, but you don't even really need the link. You can just go to the Googles 
and put in um, public domain or copyright free or commercial use um, Egyptian graphics and you will get led to several different sites that have this kind of thing available. I just linked the one where I found these. I'm going to come just slightly away from the sewing there so I can put some rickrack and not totally lose this sewing because the sewing is cool too. Okay. I was, you know, at first when I started this journal, I thought this is going to be such a boring journal. It's just going to be brown and, you know, sand color. <laughs> and I am actually kind of surprised at how colorful it's turning out, which, um, you know, it's like a very prescribed color scheme. There we go. Okay. Oh, that was a sheriff. Well, we don't see them around these parts very often. Except when they're like driving through on their route, which he probably just is. The other night, um, so let's see, today is Thursday. It was Tuesday night. So I think I've told you before about um, since we live since we live up in the middle of nowhere and the population in our county even, not just our little town, but the population in our county itself is pretty small. Uh, we're one of the we're one of, if not the least populous counties in Minnesota. We might be the least populous. Okay, that's not enough glue, apparently, to hold this on. It's not wanting to hold with this. I'll put a little more, and if it doesn't want to hold, then I'll have to just zip it down my sewing machine, which is fine. This metallic, this is a lot of metallic. Ugh, now I've got glue string spider webs. Whoa, that, my hand just got all up in your business there. Anyway, um since we are one of the least populous places around. The Minnesota National Guard um, <laughs> practiced their flying up over our territory, up over our area up here, because they um, there's not a lot of flights going through here, so they've got you know empty airspace, but they're not also not just, they're disrupting the least amount of people's lives. Well, we're some of the people whose lives get disrupted, which it's fine. Most of the time, I don't mind. I'm going to cover that back up. Cool. Most of the time, that, that sticks down now. I'll just have to put a little more next time when I do the next one. Most of the time, it's fine um, because during the day, it's actually really cool. Okay, yeah. So we can tuck something in there. Cool. I like that. Now it's papyrus and has a purpose. Okay, we'll put that one back in. Actually, I'm just gonna set it on top because I want it to dry before I glue it to something inside there, which would be totally what I would do. Um, but most of the time they do it during the day and it's really cool. You can actually, actually go out there and watch them fly around and um, they actually like dive down and do target practice with uh, like tractors. They'll lock their thing onto tractors and uh, houses. They are not carrying any weapons at the time they're doing this. Or so I've been told. I'm gonna ink these both since I know I'll be doing this to the other ones. Um, but it's, it's kind of cool to watch them, you know, they, they practice dog fighting and stuff. So you see them flying around. And then like last time they were here, they, they were flying in these large, like concentric circles and their exhaust, you know, the, their chemtrail, um, left these giant circles, like up in the sky. It was really cool to watch and to see the giant circles. Okay. Right below the stars. Well, this time, Tuesday night, 
we were laying in bed and all of a sudden I was like what is that because you could kind of hear this like low rumble in the distance and I was thinking you know like what maybe it's a big logging truck or something coming but it it was not a logging truck noise so I'm thinking what in the heck is that and my husband and I Ade, are going what what is that noise and then I went oh as it got closer and closer because they're so loud and when they're flying that low you really hear them but you don't hear them until they've already gone past so they they fly so fast when they're doing these drills that that you don't hear them you know speed of sound and light being different you don't hear them until they've already gone past and that's when you hear the as they come by <laughs> at top speeds so it was night. It was like 10, 1030 at, at night and we were hearing them go flying around up there. I mean, they were luckily they were a little bit higher up. Um, so it wasn't as like super dramatic, but man, it was loud. So then my sister-in-law and brother, my brother and sister-in-law live up. I'm trying to see there's little numbers on here. <laughs> so that tells me which direction I need to go here. They live up like 15 minutes up the road and they get like the really low flybys. And so she had posted on Facebook, like who heard the jets last night? I just had one fly by our house at like, you know, Mach 27, about 10 feet. It, 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 seriously, it sounds like they're about 10 feet above your roof. It's powerful and loud and it rumbles and shakes everything. And she's like, so the baby's up and the kids were scared. And I was like, of course they were. Because even if you sleep, you know, even if you're asleep, when they do one of those low flyovers, you will definitely be aware of it. But it was kind of cool. But it was kind of late. We've never seen them do it at, at night like that. But I suppose, you know. They need to practice flying at night, just like they need to practice flying during the day. Okay. I'm gonna trim this. And we'll put one here too. Yeah, actually I like the Rick Rack now. I was not thinking that it would be a thing for this journal, but thank you whoever said, yeah, you should totally do it. Cause I, Think that it looks great okay now we'll glue these down I'm putting a little bit bigger bead here this time okay there we go This metallic stuff is, um, oh, my fingers are gluey, which is not helping. I'm gonna use my, my instrument, <laughs> my high tech instrument for pressing down when I have gluey fingers. Because of the metallic thread in here, it's bendy. Like you can kind of shape it and bend it a little, but then where it bubbles up up here, it doesn't want to stick down all that well. Peel off some of the larger chunks of glue on my finger. Okay, then let's do this last one. So before I do that, let's flatten it out as best I can. So that maybe it will adhere better. We'll see. So after I get these done, um, I think I'm going to start working on, um, I'm trying to decide, do I want to make, I probably should make some more tags and journal cards because, you know, I'm about to probably go stuff it full of pockets and things, but I need to make pockets and things too. 
So that'll probably be the next video will be some either some more journaling cards or something or tuck spots, you know, and tuck spots in pockets. I've already made some. Oh, come on. Gluey, gluey. I think the more I mess with it, the worse it wants to keep peeling up. But it's not pressed down all the way. Oh. Pounce. We'll pounce the covered glue stick on there. Okay, there. I'm going to stop touching it. Okay. Gluey fingers to the point where it sticks to everything that I touch. That must mean that it's time to be the end of the video because um, I can't touch anything else. But I am really pleased with these. I'm excited about those. And then here's the tags that we made. Right? So there we go. More Egyptian stuff. Done. Done. I love these flips and I love that gold rickrack on there. Um, so guys, I am going to uh, call this a day, call this a video. And um, thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. And I will see you again real soon. We'll make some tuck spots and um, maybe then we'll make some clusters and then we'll just start decorating the book. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, I hope you have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night, whatever time it is, on whatever side of this fantastic globe of ours that you, that we all share. <laughs> and until I see you guys, uh, take care, stay safe, stay well, be well, be healthy. Um, and uh, I hope that you are able to do something creative and lovely with your time today, even just for a few minutes. And uh, until I see you guys next time, take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.